Hi, this is lesson 5.2, derivatives and integrals of exponential functions. And so we want to deal with exponentials. Probably did a lot of this in pre-calc, and so you should be familiar with a lot of this. So it's a function that has a constant base and a variable exponent. So for example, we have 2 to the x, e to the x, and 3 to the x squared minus 5. These are all exponential functions. So if we go ahead and use your calculator, try these on your calculator and see which one is tighter to the y-axis, 2 to the x, 5 to the x, or e to the x, and go ahead and graph these. Pause and do that. So I have the three graphs here now. This one is 2 to the x, e to the x, and 5 to the x. Now notice that if x is greater than 0, 5 to the x is greater than e to the x, which is greater than 2 to the x, which I think is pretty obvious. But then when we go on the other side, over here, when x is less than 0, 2 to the x becomes greater than e to the x and 5 to the x. That's because of the negative exponent. Then the bases are going to become, or the denominators are going to become bigger for each one of these respective functions as you go on. So <clears throat> just realize the relationship between those three graphs depending upon if x is less than 0 or x is greater than 0. I listed a couple things here, but they're all listed down here. Some things to note. Domain is negative infinity to infinity. And then the range is 0 to infinity. We never hit 0, but that would be a horizontal asymptote, which we do say here. So x goes to negative infinity, f of x will go to 0. And as x goes to infinity, f of x goes to infinity. So that means we have a horizontal asymptote of y equal to 0. Then the graph is continuous, increasing, concave upward, and 1 to 1. So that means that f prime is greater than 0 and f double prime are greater than 0 because increasing concave up. The last two, y-intercept is 0, 1. Another key point, if you plug in 1, then you just get out whatever the base is, so it's 1a. So example number 2. Using adjustments, we want to graph y or f of x is equal to e to the negative x plus 1. Well, e to the negative x if we graph this, we're going to get a strictly decreasing function, like so. Still concave up, but strictly decreasing. Then we have a vertical shift of 1. So I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote this way. I'm going to go to the point that's 1 above that horizontal asymptote, and I'm going to go in reverse this way. And so we get y equals e to the negative x plus 1. So that's what the graph looks like. This part might not be perfect, but there we go. Then go to your calculator and see if you can graph y equals e to the x. And then I also want you to, you have to be able to use this function on your calculator and graph that. Graph both those, pause this, and see what happens. So if I graph y equals e to the x, and then I want to graph the derivative y equals the derivative of e to the x. I'm going to put that in blue. And when I put that in blue, whoa, what happened? They are exactly the same. Wow. What? The derivative of e to the x is e to the x? The answer is yes. Now, the only problem is if the exponent is something different than x, then you have to do the chain rule and then do the hook on. So our rules here are derivative of e to the x is, e to the, is equal to e to the x. If we have a base that's different than e, well, we can write this, if you remember. We can write this as e to the ln a all to the x. If we do this, we can cancel the e to the ln and just be left with a. So we're exactly the same here. So we're going to go ahead and use this chain rule. If I have a function that's different than uh, x, then I have to chain it off by u prime. Well, that's what I'm going to do here. So if I have this rewritten, I can say that a power to a power, these two together, we're going to, we can multiply that. That's the 
exponent rule. So if I take y prime, I'm going to write down the function that I have, e to the ln a times x, and then I'm going to chain off by the derivative of the exponent. Well, that's just ln a. So this becomes, we know that this is a to the x times a ln a. So it's a different kind of chain rule. Do you have to go through this whole rigmarole? No, you can just memorize this. And we don't see this too often, but you do see it. So you do need to know it, but just memorize it. There you go. And then here is if we have to chain with an exponent that's different than just plain x. So here we go. These are fun. So if I take number 3 and take that derivative, y prime is going to be, oh, let's just write this down. It's the same exact thing. But then you need the chain. So I'm going to multiply by 2x minus 3. That is your derivative. I like to put the other stuff out in front, so I prefer to write it like this, but either way would probably work. Why don't you try 4 and 5? I don't think that's too much of a stretch for you, but try those and then the chains. And then come back, pause this, and try. So for number 4, just take, write down the e to the negative 3 over t, and then my chain, the derivative of that would be 3 over t squared. I wrote it up here. So you can rewrite those negative exponents and then put the stuff out in front. And then this number 5, we just write down what we have and then the chain. That's all you do for these exponential functions. Oh, but I didn't realize that I do have a base that's different than e. So then you still have to multiply by ln 3. So don't forget that piece as well if the base is not e. And number 6, find the relative extrema of this thing right here. Well, I do have f of x is equal to, I'm going to rewrite this. So when I look at this thing right here, I look at a product rule. I have two things, two functions there. So I need to use my product rule. So f prime of x is equal to the first times the derivative of the second. So I write this down as it is and then multiply by negative 4x. And then plus the second times the derivative of the first, which would just be a negative 1. So when you factor these things to try to solve this by hand, realize that this function right here is always positive. It's not going to yield a 0 for me. So if I factor it out, it makes everything else give me my zeros. So I take it out in front, and I'm going to be left with well, here's a negative x and a negative 4x, so that looks like to me to be 4x squared. And over here, I just get the minus 1. So this right here won't give me any zeros. So when I set this equal to 0, it's just going to be this that gives me my zeros. So my critical numbers are plus or minus 1 half. We set up our number line with this. So we have f of x, label it, and then I'm going to have negative 1 half, and I'm going to have positive 1 half. Like I said, this thing right here does not change sign, so the only thing that's going to determine my sign change is this over here. So if I plug in negative 1, well, I guess this is just a parabola that opens up. So f prime is going to go positive, negative, positive. Then for my f, that's going to tell me increasing, decreasing, increasing. So that tells me my relative extrema. x equal to negative 1 half is what we call a relative max. And the justification would be because f prime changes from positive to negative. Why don't you do the other one and write it out, the relative min. And they do ask for the points. So I have a point here and I have a point here. And this is how you justify the relative minimum. Make sure you justify. There we go. All right, so we do, oh, derivatives and integration all in the same section. Ooh, 
So the antiderivative of e to the x has to be e to the x, and then don't forget your constants of, constant of integration. So I need the u substitution if I'm going to work backwards. And then if I have the a as a base, well, when we took the derivative, we multiplied by ln a. So if we take the antiderivative, we have to divide by ln a. Not too bad. And then if we have it of u, we have to do a u substitution for that. So number seven throws us in the fire because we have a base of four. So I'm going to let u equal to the exponent x squared minus one. du is equal to two x dx. And so I do need a two in here. And if I put that two in, I got to balance by one half. So we have to have all those quantities in there. So I can rewrite now. This would be zero to, well, it won't be zero to one half. So I won't calculate those right now. But this would be four to the u, du. We know that that would be four to the u, ln four. And then I do have the one half out in front. Now I showed how to change the values of my limits of integration for u. So I did put this in. This is a negative 1 and this is a negative 3 fourths there. So I'm going to leave it in u and I'm going to go from negative 1 to negative 3 fourths. And if I plug those in, I'm going to just get 4 to the negative 3 fourths over 2 ln 4 minus 4 to the negative 1 all over 2 ln 4. I'm not going to simplify that for you right now, but you can simplify that and see where that takes you. Number eight, once you try it and see what happens, pause this, but I'm going to go on now. So if I let u equal to 2 over x, du is going to be, I get this here, which would be dx. And so when I substitute, I'm going to do a few things here. This one-third I'm going to pull out because it doesn't have any direct relationship to my antiderivative besides being a constant of integration. And then I'm going to have e to the u. And then I needed to put in a negative 2 here. And I do have x to the negative 2 here. So when I put this balance, I have a negative 1 half out in front. So I need this negative 1 half here. So I have e to the u du. So if I do a back substitution, this is negative 1, 6. Antiderivative e to the u is just e to the u. So I have my e to the 2 over x. That's it. And don't forget plus c. Remember, take the derivative of this to get back here to see where these pieces come from. You have to do that for yourself. Okay, this one might be tricky, number nine. Do we see a function and its derivative? Well, possibly, I do recognize this kind of as an inside function. So let me just try it. Let's let u equal to e to the x plus e to the negative x. So du is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x, because I had a chain by a negative one from this thing right here. Oh, do I have? Yeah, I have all that. That's good. And then I need this times dx. So now I just have 1 over u to the fourth. du, which is u to the negative fourth, du. And so I just take that, raise it to the one higher power, divide by that number, plus c. And then we change this back to x. So this would just be my e to the x plus e to the negative x all over negative 3 plus c. And I can't forget this negative 3 here. Now you might say, well, negative exponents, what are we going to do with those? Well, yes, you can move this whole thing down below. And we're a little bit more forgiving about writing answers with negative exponents when we have... Exponentials, it's okay probably most of the time. Number 10, e to the x, cosine of e to the x. Do you see a function and its derivative? Oh yeah, I don't even know if you need to write out this 
stuff, but maybe. du is equal to e to the x dx. There it is right there. So we just do a substitution on that. So we get cosine of u du. Antiderivative of that would just be the sine. Plug that back in. There you go. That's all you had. Notice if I take the derivative of this thing, I'd have to chain off by the inside, which would just be my e to the x, which is right there. It would work. So this was 5.2, integrating and taking derivatives of exponential functions. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.